Jim Milstein knows what it's like for a borrower to be staring down the barrel of a gun. He's a longtime banker to bankrupt companies who recently finished two years as chief restructuring officer at the U.S. Treasury Department, where he was responsible for another troubled borrower, AIG. Now you might say the entire U.S. government is staring down the barrel of a gun after Standard & Poor's warned just two days ago that it may, within two years, downgrade America's AAA credit rating. Jim, welcome back to the Inside Track. Tell me, in your mind, what is the probability that the that Standard & Poor's actually goes ahead within the next two years and ground grades America to something less than AAA? Well, Eric, that's uh, entirely within the control of the U.S. Congress. Uh, so the the negative watch that S&P put the credit rating on is uh, a way of telegraphing uh, what they see as major issues going to the AAA rating. Uh, of the government's creditworthiness, and so they've said, you know, that they, the fiscal um, path that the country is currently on is unsustainable, and unless there are major changes, uh, the credit rating could be in jeopardy. The okay, AAA but let's let's talk about the jeopardy. dynamics here, because you know, look, you have way more experience with uh, companies on uh, the sort of let's call it the slide down the credit rating scale than many people around the world and you know as well as I know that negative outlooks tend to turn into downgrades it's very very difficult to reverse that trend now the government is different from a company right it has taxation authority companies don't have that but Congress is a whole lot different from the corporate boardroom much more bickering down there so That's right. how this are they how are they going to get this accomplished Look, this is a this is at the end of the day this is a political question and S&P's negative watch is really, you know, a, it's an expression of some skepticism after 10 years of uh, really fiscal recklessness here uh, about the Congress's ability to actually resolve their differences. You know, you, you, you look back, and we've been on this path for 10 years. Uh, we had, the last time we had a balanced budget in the United States uh, was in 2000, at the end of the Clinton term. Government spending at that point was $1.8 trillion. At the end of the Bush two years of uh, two terms, government spending was $2.9 trillion. So, uh, and the, as a result of the Bush tax cuts, government revenue uh, was flat. So we increased spending by $1.1 trillion during the Bush years uh, and left revenue fundamentally flat. So we've got a problem where we have starved the government of tax revenues, which is what it lives off of, at the same time that we've massively increased spending. J and those J two things have got to get back into balance. Jim, you left the, the Treasury Department uh, just two months ago. Tell us, while you were working on the AIG case, and we know that that occupied the majority of your time and attention, was there much, much talk of the growing fiscal hole that the U.S. government was ending up in? Yeah, listen, we were, the, the Obama administration came into office uh, inheriting, you know, the greatest recession really since the Great Depression. And the first job was stabilizing the financial system. The second job was trying to stabilize the economy. The stimulus plan was an attempt to try and arrest uh, the decline in um, economic activity in the United States. And I think it's, I think you have to say two and a half years later it was successful, but it did add to the deficit. So there was always a recognition that we were going to have to uh, attack uh, the deficit uh, now. And, you know, that doesn't mean it all has to happen in one day or in one year, but the, we've got to achieve a uh, trajectory now where the deficit is coming down over time, uh, bringing revenues and spending into balance. Jim, help us explore in the next minute and a half the implications for the United States if it loses, if the tre Treasury uh, bonds lose their risk-free status. What happens to all the buyers, the buyers like pension funds and foreign governments that can only hold AAA? securities they wouldn't be able to buy US debt anymore would they uh, listen this is the Treasury it's almost unthinkable really the, the US Treasury as a triple-a rated security is is sort of the foundation of the international the global financial system and uh, the havoc that would be caused by a downgrade is really almost unthinkable it would f it would cause fundamental changes uh, in the global financial system and and I think enormous pain here in the United States so this is a solvable problem 
Uh, and I think you're seeing the two parties inching towards each other. You've got, uh, you know, there's a sort of an agreement now on the target. You know, is it over 10 or 12 years that you're going to reduce um, the deficit by four trillion dollars? I think, you know, they've agreed on the target. The question is, how does it? How do they get it done? And I think, you know, they're now under considerable pressure to get it done. You have the debt ceiling starting to pinch very soon at the government's ability to borrow, uh, and you know, you have uh, the two parties recognizing that in the absence of an ability to borrow, they're going to have to create either raise taxes so considerably so fast or cut spending so considerably so fast that uh, it's almost politically unthinkable. So they're going to have to, you know, uh, reach some deal on a long-term uh, uh, transformation of the balance between spending and revenues so as to facilitate uh, bringing this uh, budget back into balance. Jim, one quick last question. Uh as you just mentioned, it's a political problem. They've identified a figure, some $4 trillion. Timing is a question mark. But if you were to look at the balance sheet of the United States of America, is $4 trillion enough? A lot of people say that just since the Simpson-Bowles Commission uh, came up with its conclusion, we've actually raised the need for the, the number to actually be higher. Yeah, look, I, I think, look, this is a country with enormous resources. Um, we have... Uh, you know, starved the government uh, from of revenues by keeping taxes very low. We're at a, you know, the tax revenues as a percentage of G GDP have never been lower since 1950. Uh, so there's there's room to increase taxation. It's got to be done in a fair and balanced way. Um, the the point here, though, is that this country has been an enormous engine of economic growth, and and somehow achieving a, a budget accord that allows that growth to continue, that's going to be the best recipe for success. Well, growth is what everyone would like to see. We'll see if we can find a way to get there. Jim, thanks very much. Jim Milstein, former chief restructuring officer at the U.S. Treasury Department.